Hey there guys, good morning. It's Thursday the 23rd of June 2016. Right, this morning I want to discuss or talk about DMDs, which is disease modifying drugs for people with MS. But, well, certainly I want to talk about my experience with them which might just be helpful and beneficial for, um, for somebody else. There's an interesting twist which could be a little bit controversial with my story but um, I'll... Well, you've probably twigged actually with the title of the video but um, I will discuss my reasons behind doing that um, very shortly. Okay, but before I do, before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's subscribed to my channel so far. I really appreciate all the comments and all the likes, and I always try and uh, reply as quickly as possible to absolutely every comment. I don't think I've missed one yet. haven't got any dislikes yet, so that's pretty good, so I must be doing something right. Well, thanks for that, anyway. Okay, so... A disease modifying drug for people with MS isn't a cure. It's not a cure for MS. But what it is, what I understand it to be, is a preventative measure. But it's not 100%. In fact, a lot of them aren't even 50%. But what they do is they help reduce the rate of relapses. Uh, in MS. So, for example, when, when I was diagnosed in May 2013, my MS specialist uh, ushered me over to her MS nurse, uh, to the MS nurse at the hospital, and we discussed going on Rebif. Now, there was a few other options at the time as well, but I, I actually chose Rebif because <laughs> okay, because the actual injector was I was worried about doing my own injections as I'm quite sure an awful lot of other people would be or are as well if you're in, if you're in the same situation. So the injector was really good actually. The drug company put a lot of money into designing it and you just put the little cartridges into this injector and it's all electronic. And you literally just place it on your skin and press a button and it does all the rest for you. Um, it's really smooth action it it doesn't it didn't hurt really the rebif injection didn't hurt at all but why i didn't stick with rebif was because of the side effects for me the side effects were a little sort of not a lot cold symptoms but what what bothered me the most was over the years i've suffered with tinnitus which is um, ringing in the ears and whilst that tinnitus has just been in background and haven't really heard it much, the rebiff seemed to irritate it and aggravate it. So what I have noticed is when I've had a normal cold or a flu bug or something, the tinnitus has got louder, um, but then it sort of goes into background again. But the rebiff seemed to cause you know, cold symptoms anyway, and it, it just seemed to amplify the tinnitus, and I wasn't coping with that very well. It was most unpleasant. You know, the ringing in your ears, you can't stop it. I can't even hear it at the moment, but um, it, it's, in fact, I can't hear it at all, but the rebiff seemed to certainly, for me, um, irritate it considerably. So what I then did was I went, I, I stopped the rebef, I contacted my MS nurse and I said, look, I'm not coping too well with this drug, so I'm going to come off it. So I took myself off it and I went, in a few weeks time, I went on to a different drug. I'll just say as well, I made a few notes, um, I'll just say as well that um, with the rebef, you have to go 
one of, one of the other downsides is you have to have regular blood tests because it can affect your liver enzymes. I think it can elevate your liver enzymes which isn't a good thing. I'm not a doctor, I don't know why it's not a good thing but it's not. So that's not great either. Um, I think the blood tests were like every three months. We're going back about three years now so something like that. Okay so I'll, I'll just say at this point as well the, the DMDs they haven't got they, they are a preventative measure so they help prevent relapses by by lowering your immune system by reducing your immune system slightly because it's believed that in MS that your immune system attacks the myelin on the nerves it like turns inwards on itself and it attacks itself destroying the myelin um, on, on the actual nerve which is the protective nerve coating uh, a little bit like the rubber insulator for an electric wire I've actually got a video on that I think it was my previous video so check that out if you want a better explanation but it like I say it's not a hundred percent so I went my ne the next drug of choice was Copaxone. Now this was the injection for Copaxone was more of a um, more of a manual injector. You'd you'd like you'd get a um, a pack of seven syringes. You'd have to keep them in the fridge. Take one out, stick it in the injector, screw it back up again, and basically it would you'd, you'd have to. I used. I used to put the, I used to do it on my arm. That was my my arm, um, my tummy, my thigh, oh, and my hip. I think upper hip or something like that. And oh boy, them injections they really hurt and stung. I remember the very first injection I did was with the MS nurse actually at the hospital, and I did it into my into my arm. I'm not a particularly big guy. haven't got a lot of fat on me. Um, but um, what actually happened was I injected it. It, it went it. I mean, I did. It, I followed her instructions. I placed it. She knew exactly where I was injecting it, and it must have gone into injected into my muscle. Oh God, the pain was absolutely phenomenal. And I had to drive home afterwards as well. It's a good job my car's automatic because I, I literally could not lift this arm. It was so painful. And it's because I'd injected into muscle. Um, but I was just following the instructions as, as, as I was, you know, guided to do. So I wasn't too impressed with that. And as you can imagine, I was um, quite concerned about... Uh, injecting in my arms again because you have to rotate the injection sites. Okay so Copaxone apart from injection site reactions for me I had no other side effects. I think I probably felt a bit tired and groggy and as well but I was on Copaxone for two years and I really stuck it out. The, the injection site reactions, oh, you've only got to ask my wife. I, I moaned and moaned about them all the time, but that's because they were so bloody painful. Okay, so I've explained about the arm. Thighs were the worst, top of my legs, oh my god. I'd inject it on the top of my legs. Sometimes it'd be absolutely fine. But as a rule, the injection site reaction afterwards or the next day was phenomenal. Really painful sometimes injecting. But it's afterwards, it's the lump afterwards. I mean, I'm not going to exaggerate now, okay? The lump was probably. I think one of the worst ones was like almost tennis ball size lump on my thigh. It was awful. And 
the that that was the worst case scenario but always nearly always on my thighs a lump um, the best place was probably tummy um, but then you have to rotate in your tummy as well you have to go different areas in your tummy as well because the um, the capaxone can destroy fat cells in your tummy and do all sorts of strange things so I really stuck this out for, for two years every day um, one injection every day for two years and my last relapse was 2012 I, I had my first what I now know to be relapse in 2007 when all my strange symptoms started and then I had a second major relapse in 2012 which left me with a heck of a lot of disability but since then, touch wood, I've had flare-ups, but I've had no relapses. Now, the doctors and the nurses, the MS nurse at the hospital, they will say, that's because you're on a disease-modifying drug. That's because Capaxone is doing its job. But I'm afraid I wasn't convinced and I was really struggling to cope with all the painful injections every single flipping day and as I said earlier I had to rotate the injection sites and usually by the time I'd got round to like um, I'd gone all the way around my body all the different sites um, and then I got back to the first site again and that hadn't healed up so I had to skip it and then sometimes the next site hadn't healed up and I've got to skip that so basically I made myself a little rule and said if, if the where I'd injected before hadn't healed up don't inject, I mean it's common sense to be honest don't inject in that site again and it was just getting ridiculous my, my body was just getting completely injured from these injection sites I did research you know from what and the, and the doctor said and, and the uh, research on the internet said you know that you, your body will adjust to the injection sites and the reactions will get less and less well after two years it was no better so I decided at the end of 2015 my last injection of Capaxone was on the 31st of December 2015 that was it I stopped because I started to think I started to think well you know the doctors uh, uh, I briefly touched on this earlier actually um, they, they will say oh you know you're not having a relapse because um, and you've got no new lesions because the Capaxone's doing its job it's, it's doing its job but I wasn't convinced and I haven't had a, like I say I haven't had a relapse since 2012 so I decided to stop it's now 23rd of June this 2016 I haven't used a disease modifying drug for almost six months and I am absolutely fine I eat a healthy diet I, I don't eat junk food or anything like that I just I don't know if that helps I'm not sure but um, I haven't had a disease modifying drug now for six months and within a few weeks of coming off it I I felt a lot better to be honest because I I just seemed to be tired and run down all the time now I want to just say I am not suffering from MS relapses on a regular basis there is a lot of people out there with MS that are suffering from relapses on a regular basis I get a lot of flare-ups where my symptoms get really really bad and affect me and I just have to basically take it easy but then that calms down and I'm back to what my my normal is but I want to just say that I'm not by any way encouraging people to stop taking their disease modifying drug they've got to follow the you know the hospital um, instructions the doctors that sort of thing this this isn't about that I'm just telling you what 
I've decided to do. I'm giving some consideration to going on like um, a tablet form of drug. There are some there are some tablet tablet drugs, disease modifying drug tablet forms out there, but I've done some research and because obviously you have to take a tablet through the mouth and it has to go through your digestive system pretty much all of them sickness, diarrhea you know I don't know if I can be doing with that to be honest but it's a balance you have to balance it with like how your MS is affecting your life how many relapses you're having if I suddenly started to have regular relapses where I had I think a relapse is defined as like a new symptom so all my symptoms are in my feet, my legs um, they basically just don't work very well um, uh, I did have symptoms in my hands um, from an old lesion that was in my cervical spine but that's, that's almost like gone but if I suddenly had new symptoms like suddenly uh, my cheek went normal or my head, part of my head went normal something like that I'd consider that to be like a relapse and after, have a, after having regular relapses I, I would definitely go back on a disease modifying drug again such as Capaxone or one of the oral tablet forms but part of my thinking process i didn't i didn't just think to myself i'll oh, sod it you know i'm going to i'm going to stop taking it now i've had enough i i thought to myself well capaxone only prevents relapses by up to very important up to one third, 33%. It only prevents relapses by up to 33%. Now that's not very much. In my opinion, that's not very much. When I compare it to the suffering I was going through with all the flipping injections every day, well, you know, one injection per day, every day for two years, and the pain, it was making my life miserable. I can tell you now, I'm a lot happier not on Capaxone. But, like I said, I'm not relapsing. I'm not relapsing a lot, like a lot of other MS sufferers are, and I would never advise, well, basically, this, isn't, this video isn't about advice, it's just about my experience, you know, with these drugs. But, you know, for someone that is relapsing a lot, they're probably their best to stay on them. If it, you know, it has been proven to reduce the relapses, but in my opinion, not by very much. 33% isn't by very much. So it's like, if I was to be having three relapses a year, it would only prevent one of them. You know, so if I wasn't on the drug, I'd have three, instead of being on the drug and have two. You know, Anyway, that's my little story. I think this video is going on for quite a while now. So I hope that this video has been interesting to some people. Um, incidentally, there's quite a lot of people out there, if you Google it, that have got a similar type of thinking to me as well. And they actually feel that... Um, coming off the drug was, was a beneficial thing for them but then of course you've got this is where the subject gets quite controversial you've got the other side of people thinking god you flipping idiot you've got MS why are you coming off the drug but they've got to appreciate that injecting Capaxone every day hurts big time and I wasn't prepared, me personally, I wasn't prepared for that 33% prevention 
I wasn't prepared to go through it anymore and I did give it a good shot, two years. Anyway guys, I think I've uh, gone on long enough, I think uh, you, you pretty much understand what, <coughs> understand what I'm trying to say in my point. Once again, thanks very much for everybody that's subscribed. I've noticed I'm getting a subscriber like every every day or every other day now, so that's pretty cool. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks for all your comments and likes, and I hope to hear from anybody anybody soon. Um, and if if I can help with anything, obviously over the last oh god, since I've been suffering with this horrible disease um, for the last nine years. Um, I've gained quite a lot of knowledge and experience and, and if I can offer any kind of insight to anybody please just put me a comment up anything you want ask me anything you like and I'll reply as honestly as I can um, okay cheers guys thanks for listening and bye bye for now <laughs>